Okay, today's good person to know is Dr. Ilona Bonniewell. She's an academic specialising in positive psychology, which is not about fixing what's wrong with you, but building on your strong points. In a competitive environment, organisations have to motivate their staff to create optimum conditions. So what are the main drivers for improved performance and satisfaction in the workplace? Well, Ilona says that when we experience positive emotions, we're more productive, we're more creative, and we're better at problem solving, and overall, we're better thinking. So the next time you hold a meeting, please make it fun and enjoyable so that everyone is motivated. Ilona says that the more stress you have at work, the worse you perform and that it is a myth that stress is good for you because it's not. She says that when we're happy, we're more engaged, we're more productive, we have a lot more energy and we have greater job satisfaction. So what is happiness? Ilona says it's about feeling good and doing well and says it's all about the mindset. The best thing of all about the mindset is it's based on information and can change and it also applies to high achievers who after very long periods of time of doing really well in life because they've constantly been praised all their life, they just stop and they just can't carry on. Did you know that praising the mindset is like fixing intelligence? To come to think of it, it's really bad for you. So instead of praising someone for how well they've achieved or performed, it's better to praise them for their efforts so that they can carry on going in life. Another area that Ilona explored was using one's strengths, which she says is our capabilities. When we concentrate on our strengths, not only do we feel better and we have more energy, but we also are more engaged. So do things that you're good at because only then will you work at optimum capacity. Ilona says, identify your strengths, own them and action them. Now for those of you not coping very well in life, I really hope you enjoy this video. So thank you for watching. For more formal definition, positive psychology is a science of optimal human functioning. It's not about fixing what is wrong, it's about building what is strong. Nowadays, to get the optimal productivity, especially in the competing world, in the world where other countries are producing probably faster, much faster than we are, we have to learn something completely different. We really have to know how to motivate people. We really need to create the optimal conditions for people to work in, to enjoy the work they're doing, to be passionate about the work they're doing, to be actually happy to work. And so what are the main drivers? What are the main things to focus on in order to improve both our performance and our satisfaction in the workplace? And these are some of the drivers. Raising the psychological capital, our hope, our optimism, our resilience in order to optimize our performance. Raising of positive emotions, more happiness and positive emotions would work. Making sure that we operate within the growth mindset. Making sure that actually our work makes sense, that we have some sort of meaning in what you are doing, and perhaps not stop some sort of meaning, but actual meaning, and making sure that we are using our strengths. When we experience positive emotions, we are more creative, we are more able to multitask, we are better at problem solving, much better, we think better overall, we think in a way that expands possibilities and opportunities, we function better. I mean, would you prefer to sit at a boring meeting or a fun meeting? How many fun meetings do you attend? Okay. And yet, when do you think you come up with better decisions? During the fun meeting or during a boring meeting? Sort of widespread assumption, the stress does not actually benefit performance. In fact, what the majority, 55% of studies show, that the more stress we have, the worse we perform, not vice versa. And in fact, what the studies do show, that it, that it is when we are happy and engaged at work, we are performing much better. We are more productive, we take less days of sick, so therefore we cost even our employers a lot less, we have much more energy, we are more able to get up in the morning, we are much more engaged than people who are the least happy, we have much more job satisfaction. What is happiness? In fact, in psychology, in positive psychology, we operate with two definitions of happiness or well-being. One of them is so-called hedonic well-being, and another one is so-called eudaimonic well-being. So hedonic well-being is indeed about feeling good, feeling good about life, about having positive emotions, about just feeling happy on a daily basis, about having some good relationships, for example, close people around you. The eudaimonic concept, the second concept, is about doing well. So it's about having meaning in what we are doing, it's about being engaged in different <coughs> activities in what we are doing. Another factor which is very important for performance, for optimal performance, 
for ourselves and also for the organization to work on, relates to the notion of mindset. I'm sure some of you would have heard it because it's, it's a really, really fundamental notion developed by somebody called, and a researcher called Carol Dweck. So what we do know about the brain in general, and we discover more and more and more, that actually our brains do change. And our brains do change related to the information we are receiving. So, so our brain structures do change on the basis of our learning. In fact, they continue to change. Our brains continue growing up to the way, up to the, the, the day they actually die. And what researchers have found out that our beliefs about whether our capacities are open to growth or not are very, very, very fundamental to both the way we are learning, performing, um, showing effort or not showing effort, and actually learning from mistakes. So our beliefs about whether our capacities are fixed or developing are very, very important. The belief that we can develop and grow, or whether we believe that they are born like that, and they are going to stay like that. So imagine you are thinking, quietly, my IQ is about X number, and it's probably going to stay like that. It's actually not true, because even our IQ can change rather dramatically. So this belief as to whether our capacities are growing or not growing is very important. We're not only talking about people with low expectations. We're talking also about people with high expectations. People who think they're great, people who keep flying through school and doing absolutely marvelous job and then getting to university and at some point hitting a brick wall and then just somehow stopping and avoiding and actually not continuing anymore. So it's not about whether you are clever or not clever. It is about whether you believe that you can continue developing or not. And if we believe that we continue developing, which is in fact the case, supported by the science, that we do develop and we do perform much better after any difficulty. The meaning of feedback is very important as well. Praising for intelligence, praising for talents rather than for effort can be detrimental because it can actually fix the mindset, therefore prohibiting us from developing. Another very, very fundamental factor in performance, organizational performance and personal performance is about using your strengths. So what are strengths? Strengths are our capacities, sort of existing quite natural capacities apply to different spheres of life. We can be creative, we can be kind, we can be socially intelligent, we can be quite wise. There are many, many strengths. There are different inventories, three different inventories at the moment, <coughs> measuring strengths. What is important in the use of strengths is that when we do use the strengths, we do perform better, but we also feel more energized. And this we can distinguish the strengths from not only weaknesses, but also from our competences or learn behaviors. How do we discover our strengths? How do we work with our strengths? And there are different inventories, as I mentioned. We have three different inventories. The A, value seduction. Relic 2, which is inventory of strengths developed by a British uh, company called CAP. And also the Gallup Strengths Finder, which is another approach to strengths definition. They have slightly different definitions. But if you really want to integrate strengths fully in your life, I mean, the first step for me is to really identify them using different inventories, props like cards, <coughs> interviews, discussion with your friends, asking your other friends what they think your strengths are, for example. Identifying the set of strengths, first of all, and owning them. So thinking, okay, I think this is really me. How do you know it's really you? I mean, the gut test. And also if you do feel this energy when you're using your strengths. So if you feel good when you're doing this, there is a good chance it is your strength. But that doesn't end here, because once you are clear and have identified your strengths, afterwards the next point is, what do you do about them? How can you really make sure you are going to perhaps reshape your work, change your work, try to really make sure that your life, the way you are living it, is reflected, is reflective of what you are really, really are, and where you feel really at your best.